Hey guys, welcome to another Chelsea SW6 match preview. It has been such a long time since we've been back on this channel and there's three really simple explanations to this. Work commitments, ill health and then on top of that we had a few YouTube problems that we needed to fix for the channel before we were back on here again. Now that we've gotten those three things out of the way, it now means we can get back to exactly what we wanted to do which is create some amazing Chelsea content for you guys to enjoy, for you guys to interact with, it, with us as well and just proceed with what we were doing beforehand but obviously we wanted to make sure that we actually don't have to have these types of issues before I've started a new job and Tony's obviously doing his job but his one can be quite demanding at times and obviously it's led to us not being able to post on here for a while so firstly I'm just excited to be back on here doing another match preview and on the back side of that actually we had such a symbolic week what a bad performance that was against Crystal Palace but again we're back in the Champions League football and tomorrow we face Roma I have been looking so forward to this game and I'm happy to be going to this game but I'm also going to Roma on the 31st of October too so I'm really really excited that back to back I get to watch Chelsea this time I uh, won in this country and then then to Rome and I'm really really excited about it like I said um, but let's get this match preview underway let's talk about Roma for a second here Roma in regards to how well they've been doing this season in their past six games in all competitions they've only managed to lose one game and won five their most recent game was against Napoli where they lost 1-0 however they've also managed to beat AC Milan and their only other defeat came against Inter Milan and it tells you a little bit about how well they've been doing this season. The reason I say they've been doing well this season is within regards to how much injuries they've had to actually deal with as a club. I'll talk about that a little bit later on in regards to when we talk about the appreciation for them as an opposition. In regards to us facing them in a Champions League in the past, the last time we faced them was in 2008 where we beat them 1-0 at Stamford Bridge but lost 3-1 in the reverse fixture. And that's when we were placed in a group with them. So it's first versus second in this match. And it'll be a very interesting tie regardless. But let's talk about Chelsea for a second. Antonio Conte at the press conference today spoke about Chelsea's updates on players. And he spoke about Alvaro Morata firstly, saying that Alvaro Morata is more than likely going to be starting in this game. And I think it gives you a bit of an indication about what he's going to expect from Alvaro Morata in this match. Because Michi Batshuayi has not been having an easy time and adapting to this formation that we've got here. I, I know he's had over a year to at least be at this club and actually get used to this formation. At the same time, he's not had a year worth of football to get used to this formation. Alvaro Morata, I think, is more made for this type of formation. He's more easily adapting to being a target man and being able to link up play for a whereas Michi has been struggling with that aspect of the game. One other interesting point to point out about this press conference was Antonio Conte spoke about loads in regards to the players not being used to uh, consecutive f fixtures and obviously this season we're in a lot more competitions being named in the Champions League already just brings a lot more games for us to have to play there's also international break where a lot of our players got injured so no N'Golo Kante as we already know and unfortunately we can now add that to Victor Moses to that list as he got injured against Victor and against Crystal Palace it unfortunately does mean we lose him for a month. This more than likely also means he'll be missing the game against Man United. But it also gives a chance to Zappa Costa to see how well he's maybe ad adapted to our formation. He's been at the club now, uh, I feel like, a little bit long enough. But having to wait for Victor Moses to either get injured in order to get a chance for me or and having to wait for rotation is sometimes not the best way to see what a player is actually capable of. If he now has a month to actually prove himself a month to take that position and see what he can do with it and I think he, we have a good play on our hands here and it's about time that we get a chance to see what he's actually made of and going back again to regards to Chelsea this is where we have a lot in common with Roma Roma have been dealing with a lot of injuries themselves too and somehow they've managed to still be able to do well. They have played only seven games in their domestic league and one of their games got suspended which is why they currently lie fifth in their own league and again they've dealt with that quite well regardless because I think when we spoke about this past transfer window a lot of us as Chelsea fans have been frustrated for one main specific reason and that's because when we looked at our depth in our squad we felt like we didn't have that depth however obviously when the transfer window shut we all shut our mouths simply because we were like until injuries happen we don't really need to worry as much we just need to trust the squad and hope that Antonio Conte and the squad are able to pull through, pull through this at least until January and let's see what happens in the injury front now 
obviously in the last three three weeks we've had too many injuries and I think that already shows you as to why Antonio Conte was so frustrated during that transfer window because I think he realizes how much rotation is such an importance of being able to maintain and play in different types of competitions and have that rotation option. And it's not about rotating the, rotating the squad often, it's about being able to have that option when it's necessary. And I think it's quite already clear for us to all see that our players are under tough uh, training regimes and I think you then add um, many fixtures onto that list plus international break you've got yourself injuries and it's not something that I didn't expect it was something that obviously I was praying against and I was hoping it wouldn't happen but it has happened again this will test our squad I think at the very least this should send up a message to the board and hopefully going forward we'll see what happens but let's move on from this subject to take a look at the starting lineup I'm expecting for this game now one thing I will particularly notice uh, what you will particularly notice I should say actually is um, that I am not starting William William I don't think is having the best of times so far at, at Chelsea He's, under a lot of pressure, I think, uh, considering the fact that this time last year he also lost his mom, I think he's going through a difficult period, but he's also not performing on that pitch. And it baffled me against Crystal Palace that he got to start over Pedro, because Pedro, whenever has, he has come on, has been an engine that has been missing in that team. He runs in behind the ball, he puts pressure on, on players, and in fact, when he's not on the ball, you feel his presence just as much as when he doesn't have the ball. Whereas William, for me, whether he's on the ball or off the ball, he hasn't been on form. And that, for me, is already a good, strong enough reason to actually leave William out and get, get, get him on the bench for this match. I think Pedro, that least in this match deserves a starting lineup and you know what it'll be interesting to see what we do in regards to Bakayoko and Fabregas because one of the things you will notice in that Crystal Palace match was the fact that they kept on going through the middle and Bakayoko and Fabregas I think are quite attack minded attacking minded players and unfortunately it did leave us at times too exposed to certain counter attacks and too exposed to pace and uh, you then saw David Luiz, Gary Cahill, even Aspilicueta struggle at moments so it'll be interesting to see how well we do against Roma. Roma are missing a few plays themselves but I do think we have a capable squad to be able to get a result in this match. We are at Stamford Bridge I think because it's a Champions League and it's against a big opposition and also on the back side of our last almost recent defeat against Crystal Palace I think the players will be really up for it at least I hope they will be because otherwise this is unacceptable and it'll be interesting to see what we do but I think when you look at that lineup I think it's a strong lineup that can definitely get a result for us let's talk about Roma well Roma unfortunately this season have been hit with far too many injuries obviously they've lost Mo Salah and when you lose Mohamed Salah I think it put them in a bit of a predicament I don't think they have done a great job at being able to replace him and unfortunately that's put them in a difficult predicament but then you add on top of that a few of these injuries that unfortunately hasn't made things easy for them however they have still managed to actually keep things as tight as possible they've only managed to concede six goals in all competitions which to me when I look at Chelsea, I'm like, damn, we've conceded far more than that and we weren't hit with as many injuries as they were and we haven't lost a key player like they did. And that, again, already shows you a little bit of an indication about what to expect in this month. They are very good at the back. They are very well organized. Unfortunately, and they also lost most recently Costas Manolas to an injury, which is one of their main center backs. I think that's going to have a bit of an effect on them. You then have Stefan al Sharawi missing the game. You also have Kevin Strootman, who's a good defensive midfielder that and controls the game for them, but also is a very good at being able to protect the back line. And you already can see a little bit of an indication about how much, of a, how much in the depth of their squad that will be missing in this game. This is a game where they only have 14 senior players to actually pick from. And more than likely what we'll see on their bench is a few youngsters to have to fill the spot in for them. Again, this is a little bit to just tell you about Roma. Now, I want to talk about their main threat because the main threat for Roma is very simple to me. And Edin De Zerko, it's a man that we're very familiar with. It's a man that's played for Man City in the past and has been killing it in the Italian league so far. And he's scored eight goals in all competitions so far for them. And he's managed to do a great job regardless of the type of injuries the team seems to have faced. He's been delivering for them and I think that again shows you a little bit about how good Roma are at being able to actually keep a squad 
still fighting even regardless of what predicament they're facing. This is where I am a little bit quite critical of Chelsea because when we lose certain key players, we suddenly don't function. And I think that is something we need to get out of. That's a habit that is just always going to make us feel like we have to rely on certain players. So for me, Edin De Circle doing as well as he is as a striker for them, he's the main threat that I will be worried about in this game. He's the man, the main person that I think if we can shut him down, because I think he's an aerial threat more than anything, and we have been not that great when it comes to aerial situations and I, I hope that we are very much aware of this player and we are, this is not a player that we need to underestimate. He's got Premier League experience, he's got Champions League experience and he's very deadly in front of the goal when you give him chances too. So we need to make sure about that aspect of things. My expectation for this game very much always uh, quite positive, quite optimistic I shall say. And I, the reason I feel like that is because I think in this scenario, when you look at Roma, they are missing quite a lot of players. However, at the same time, they're not an opponent that I would still take lightly. I think what will give us extra motivation is we are at home. On the backside of a defeat of Crystal Palace, I'm expecting us to perform very strongly in this match because we have a point to prove. I also feel like this is a match where Alvaro Morata coming back into the team is going to have a big effect on us and I think that will be a confidence boost to the players. It'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of other changes at the back line for me. That that will be an indication to see of how critical Antonio Conte can be of players and if he's willing to take them out of the team if they're not performing to the standard that they need to because there's players like Christensen and Rudiger who I think haven't done much wrong and they don't get me wrong in matches they've had moments of maybe a questionable moment. More Anthony Rudiger than uh, Christensen. I think Christensen hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Especially in that game against Man City, he showed me how ready he is for that first team spot. I think that's where I want to see Antonio Conte not be afraid to take players out if you're not performing up to the standard. If you're not killing in the first team and making sure you lead by example, you need to be taken out. That's not necessarily just aimed at Gary Cahill, that's aimed at any of the players that are in this squad. If you're not delivering it, you can't be in this squad. Simple as. You need to feel what it's like on the bench and you need to work hard to make sure that you maintain your uh, standards and consistency in order to be in this squad. I'm expecting win and I'm going for a 3-1 win in this game because I think the players will be very hungry for this match. We are at home, like I said, and I want us to be actually prove our point here. Roma is missing a few key players, that will help us big time. At the same time, we still can't be complacent. This is still a team that's in the Champions League that lies fifth in their league, that has still managed to beat AC Milan, who spent so much money this year. We've got to remember those types of things. It'll be interesting to see what happens. 3-1 is my expectation, and I hope Pedro does start, because Pedro deserves it. And I would like to see what happens if we have Pedro, Alvaro, Morata, and Hazard up front. That will be a very interesting lineup for me at the front. And I can't wait to see what happens also on the back, on the back in terms of our defence as well. I want to see what Antonio Conte does with that too. It'll be interesting to see if he makes any changes. And that's, that's my point of view. Now, I want to pass you over to Tony. So Tony, I've been waiting for this for a long time, my friend. It's over to you. Let's hear your thoughts for this game, my friend. I can't wait actually, guys, uh, for tomorrow night. I absolutely adore um, the Champions League. I can't emphasise it you know, enough. Like. But first of all, I just want to explain a few things. I'm sure Mo's um, put you up to date with regards to the reason why we've been off air for a few weeks now. And it's basically due to the fact that um, I, I really was quite poorly, guys, for about 10, 10 to 12 days. And then, of course, there was work on top of that. And it all got a bit much, really. Um, the time we got home, it was too late, this, that, and the other. And we wanted, obviously, to keep the content levels, um, you know, decent. Uh, we didn't want to just put stuff out there, like, you know. Which is one of the reasons, guys, um, the Crystal Palace vlog is not actually up on the channel. Um, if you do want to watch that vlog, guys, and um, half-time and full-time reaction, um, it's quite um, explosive, if you like. It's on the Facebook group, um, Chelsea's W6 Facebook, so check that out on there, guys. But of course, uh, it's uh, business as usual from now on. So um, thank you so much for sticking by us, um, you know, through that uh, last couple of weeks, which indeed you always do. Mega respect there, guys. Okay then, well look, Champions League, and um, it's a game where, if I was Antonio Conte, I'd be putting everything into this, absolutely everything, because I think that. Especially with the um, the away game, which incidentally me and Mo uh, must be going out to that uh, to Rome. Um, 
they want to win this game, uh, and, and the reason for that is that they could probably rest, um, perhaps even the, you know the whole team uh, against the Roma away. So you know this is a game where I feel we'll be putting everything in to, to, to get the three points. But of course, it's also a very dangerous game as well because the way that the group is poised right now, I, I'd imagine that Roma will be looking to nick something out of this this game. Certainly not um, you know being defeated. They'd want to at least get grab a draw uh, at Stamford Bridge. So for that reason, it's going to be extremely uh, dangerous. Now, I understand um, they lost us, just like us, they lost at the weekend and at home uh, to Napoli. Um, so they're not in great nick. And of course, we all know during the course of the close season, they did get rid of uh, quite a number of players. And of course, we ended up with um, Antonio Rüdiger as a result of that factor. Up front, Zeko is their danger man. But um, I'm expecting this to win, you know, I'm expecting this to put out a really strong side out there. Um, Avera Morata should be back for us, Eden Hazard, um, Pedro I'm expecting to start, and I'm expecting um, Aspen Aqueta, David Luiz, and um, I would go with Rudiger to be fair, but I think it'd be Gary Cahill, and I think um, obviously knowing Golo Kante, so it'd be Bakayoko and Cesc Fabregas, I would imagine is holding, holding midfield. But no Victor Moses, so I imagine it'd be Zaba Costa and of course um, Marcus Alonso on the other side. Prediction for the game, um, I think we'll win. I think they'll score, but I think we'll win. And I, I'm predicting it to be Chelsea 3, Roma 1, and um, back to you, Mo. <laughs> Now, thank you very much for that, Tony. Uh, Tony, as you can hear from him, is a big fan of Champions League nights and he's expecting a 3-1 victory, which was actually a bit of a surprise to me there too. Like me and him, we are expecting to consider this situation and that's our opinion on this game. That's our preview of this game. We'd love to hear from you guys, actually. It'd be great to hear what you think the lineup will be, but also what you expect the scoreline to be and who do you think should be main starters in this squad because... Now that we've played a few games, I think we're starting to see a bit of a clearer picture about who we are expecting to be the main players for us this season. And we'll see what happens after this game because we've got Watford after this as well. So, again, we have an interesting week coming up. Let's see what happens. Thank you for watching this video guys, like I said, and we are always going to be trying to do these types of videos for you guys. If you liked this video and you enjoyed it, please make sure that you leave a like on this video. So please click on that thumbs up button. And if you could also do us a favor, we are on all social media as well. Those will be in the description below. Please go actually follow us or like them. And it just enables us to be able to interact with you guys as the fans as well. And, and it'd be great also if you could just comment below. What do you think the scoreline is going to be? What do you expect their lineup to be? We'd love to hear from you guys. Take care. Peace out, guys.